Now today's lesson is all about magic fabrics and this is my favorite part of working with color and fabric and you can read more about magic fabrics in my book The Quilters Color Club. I have a special feature on it and lots of examples. So what are magic fabrics? In a nutshell they animate a quilt, give a quilt life and vitality and sometimes movement. And I came up with the term magic fabrics years ago when I was teaching one of my color workshops and a woman came with a fabric that was cream and gold dappled. It has a, a very subtle organic print. And when we cut it up and put it in the block, it was absolutely gorgeous. It just glowed. And I said, that fabric is magic. That's a magic fabric. So that's how the term came, came to be. And it has um, grown into my favorite part. Magic fabrics can have the sensation of light that's coming from underneath the surface, which is luminosity, bouncing off the surface, which is luster, or overlapping, two see-through colors overlapping to create another color. Batiks are among the best fabrics for magic fabrics and for these effects because they have this organic light quality that you don't see with a printed fabric and a very definitive design. So these two batiks are wonderful examples. The one on the upper left is my favorite. And I just uh, suggest that you choose batiks that don't look muddy because when you think about it, batiks are formed when two dyes are mixed together so they can sometimes neutralize each other. So look for batiks that are clear in color and have the sense of light. Printed fabrics are magic fabrics too and these are two of my all-time favorites. The one in the upper left, I bought the whole, the whole bolt, I think it was four, four yards when I saw it because I loved it so much. It's wonderful for creating luminosity. It looks like it's smoldering under the surface, it's very warm but it has that motion in the leaf pattern that gives it a lot of vitality. The fabric on the right is a printed fabric that looks almost like it could be a batik, but it has again that dappling of lighter and darker areas. And here's the block that I made using these fabrics. And you can see how they really make magic in the block. The center fabric looks like it's just glowing, and the large triangles have this wonderful organic mottled quality. So there are other kinds of fabrics that are magical. Among my favorites are woven plaids and stripes, and here are three woven plaids that really can do amazing things in a quilt design. I've seen them in stores, and I see them, and I ask the shop owners about them, and they say, you know, people don't really know how to use them. And I say, that's a magic fabric. You need to, you need to make a few samples. They're woven before they're, they're, I'm sorry, they're dyed before they're woven, so they have this very subtle shifting color not only color but also in value. And let me show you a block that I made using the magic fabric on the right. You probably wouldn't notice just that center fabric, but it has that shift in light and value and you get the sense that you're looking through a cutout square. Now if you remember back to value, light values recede and dark values come forward because this is the lightest value in the block. It seems to be off in the distance. I surrounded that magic fabric with a dark green dot that's a batik, a batik stripe, which I just love because they're irregular stripes, they're not printed stripes, and a batik in the outer area that's a little bit darker in value than the center. So you get this great sense of depth and layering and looking off into the distance. Other fabrics that are just amazing are hand dyes. And the one on the right is a hand dye from Ellen Noble and she actually paints her fabrics on long, long tables. And you can see how alive and dancing and almost musical that fabric is. It just has so much life in it. Now the one on the left is printed, but because of the shift in the, in the values, the, gradi the gradation of the values, you get this sense that light is sort of flowing across the surface. A few more examples. These are two batiks and one printed fabric, and again the dappling, the modeling in the batiks makes them look as though there's light from underneath the surface. The fabric on the right is very opaque. It doesn't have that sense of being shot with light, but it still has magic qualities because it's so organic and the shapes are so irregular. And Let me show you the colorway I made out of this one. I made three small versions of a quilt in different colorways to show what happens when you put the fabrics together and how different values, patterns, textures, and colors change the look of the design. So in this block, the center, the very center of the unit is the um, model dappled batik, and then the lightest batik is in the areas in between the triangle units. 
So you get a great sense of layering and depth and lots of interest from the um, variations in the patterns. Another colorway is very different. This one has an ombre in the background areas that are in, in between the triangle units. It has a very subtle gradation in value and um, color. It's almost as if there's an ethereal, airy quality to the piece because of that fabric alone. It's very magical. And one more. This one is entirely different. The first two examples had a real sense of depth because of the change in values and where I place the fabrics. In this example, the magic fabric is the stripe. It's an organic printed stripe, but it's very irregular, and it has the effect of drawing your eye to that area of the quilt. So instead of the triangle units reading as the primary pattern, these bands of vertical and horizontal color and pattern, they become dominant, and the aboriginal print that's used with the stripe is just a great companion to that fabric and another very organic printed fabric in the center of the piece. Now the vest I'm wearing features a stripe, an ecot stripe, because again these threads were dyed before they were woven. And I put the fabric on a foundation of muslin and then did twin needle stitching on the lines of the stripes and it totally changed the fabric. It made it seem a little bit darker. I, can, I think you can see the difference. And it gave it this actual texture which, which creates these little peaks and valleys, which creates these tiny, tiny shadows that darken the value. So that was a lot of fun to work with that. I also, in this vest, have some magic fabrics in the collar. I pieced the collar and I did some pieced blocks on the side using different fabrics. And some of those worked magic too. They were very dappled and very luminous. Here's a printed stripe that goes from light to medium, kind of to medium dark, to medium and light again. And with this kind of printed stripe, you really get the sense of a wash of color, almost like a ripple of color and light going across the surface. And if I show you the quilt that I use this fabric in, just a portion, you can see that in the outer border I've run the stripe um, in piano keys fashion, so the stripes are going outward, and the quilting adds to the texture. But I think you can also see that there's almost an iridescent quality to the fabric because of that very, very subtle shift in value and color across, across the borders. Put that there. Another example of uh, magical fabric, this is a hand dye again, a hand painted fabric from, from Ella Noble, and you can see how it has qualities of nature in it. It's not a crisp, definite print. It's very, very subtle, has striations of color and value. And let's look at the quilt. This is my Earthscape quilt. And you can see that I used magic fabrics in the upper right and the upper left, Ellen Noble fabrics, and how those lighter values seem to recede. What I love about a lot of hand dyes is that the colors become very nuanced. It's not just one color with a little bit of dappling. There are lots of colors mixed in there. They photograph beautifully and they add such a degree of sophistication to your quilts. You can also see how value is doing all of the work here, or a lot of the work. Those sky fabrics recede because they're lighter in value. The fabrics at the bottom of the quilt in the foreground read as foreground because they're so dark in value. It also helps that those fabrics have a lot of linear design quality to them so you get the sense that those pieces are coming forward. Lots of magic fabrics in this little quilt. Really enjoyed working on it. Also, I have the quilt that's on the cover of my book, Lotus Leaves Squared, and I just isolated a part of this quilt to show you magic fabrics working in the background. If you look at the lower right block and the lower, the lower right block and the upper sorry, upper left block, had to peek. You can see that there's a lighter hand dyed fabric that is surrounding the blocks. And because I put the blocks together in the way that I did, where those two pieces are touching, you create the illusion that there's a light value plane of color underneath these darker value squares that are floating on top. So with this design, you can actually be very deliberate in how you choose your fabrics and how you place them. You can also see that there are hand dyes, hand painted fabrics, and some very regular 
woven stripes that also kind of calm down the um, the magic fabrics and give it a great geometric feel. I love to combine stripes with magic fabrics because the stripes sort of tame the magic fabrics. And last but not least, I have this framed piece that I made shortly after making the lotus leaves quilt. And there are magic fabrics in here. Here's a hand dye. Here's a hand painted fabric. That's also hand dyed. Another um, hand painted and here and here. But you can see again that I've used some very plain stripes and I heard it said once that every quilt needs a little bit of mud. Well to me the muddiness is added with these stripes that are very regular, kind of blah, not very dynamic, but they help to sort of organize the design and give it a really crisp, sharp um, image. You can see again values doing all of the work. Lighter values surrounding the red center, surrounded by darker value juxtaposed with blocks that have the red center, dark values surround, but surrounded by lighter value. So by alternating those values from block to block, you get a sort of syncopated rhythm into the quilt just from the use of the values. So I hope you've really enjoyed learning about magic fabrics. This is the stuff that makes me wake up in the morning and get up and be excited about working with my quilts. So I suggest that you go out and look for magic fabrics and find a few and start playing around with them. And now for your homework assignment, your color study, you're going to make a concentric squares block. And I want you to choose a magic fabric for the center, then surround it with a darker value, a medium value, and then a lighter value to create the sense of layering and depth. So for your center fabric, look for a fabric that's mottled, dappled, shot with light, something that has the qualities that will give the block vitality. That's it for today. Next time we're going to start in on specific examples of transparency, luminosity, luster, and opalescence. <laughs>